In this particular lecture, let's learn about using state in a functional component. So even before learning that, I would like to clear up one thing. In the older versions of React, the functional components were the components which didn't have any state. So for example, right now we know that there are two types of component, the class component and the function component. And earlier, only the class component were the stateful component which could actually have a certain state and the functional components were the one which did not have any kind of state. And hence both the functional component were called as a stateless component. So whenever you actually had to use state, you would always need to go with class based component. However, React has now actually turned their development direction more towards functional components and since then they have been adding more features to functional components as well. And one of those feature adds is making the functional component stateful by giving the power of state to the functional component. So right now we have learned how to use stateful components which were the class based component and how to create a state and how to make use of that particular state in a class based component. The problem though is that whenever you are using class based component there is always an issue with this, this keyword and it's a great deal of confusion for many developers even for experienced developers the this keyword can turn out to be pretty confusing. Now one solution to that is you could go ahead and just shift to functional components but earlier the problem was functional components were stateless components and there was no advantage of using functional component over a class based component. But since react version 16.8, what react team has done is that they have added something called as hooks. And what those hooks allow you to do is that they allow you to use state and some other react features without even having to write a class. So let's try to go ahead and create a functional component and let's try to create a state inside that. So I would go ahead, I would go into my components directory, create a new file. Uh, let's call this component as functional counter.js. So let's say similar to this counter, which is a class based counter, we want to create a similar counter, but this time we want to use a functional component. So let's do that up over here. So with any function first of all you create a function so you say function uh, let's say functional component and again and again i'm repeating that i'm using regular functions here not the es6 functions just for the sake of simplicity uh, but the industry standard is that you make use of arrow functions here instead of those regular functions and now let's go ahead and export that so export default functional component once we do that now let's actually make this thing return a div so return and make this thing return a div and once we have returned the div let's add it to the app.js so i would go here i would import the functional that is actually counter not component so import functional counter from dot slash components slash that's going to be functional counter and i guess i've named this thing as functional component let's change its name back to functional counter so sorry for that okay so now once we have this functional counter let's add it to the app.js up over here so i would say functional counter okay so once this thing is added uh, let's actually go back here and let's have some sample text here and see if that is actually displayed up over there. Yeah, it's actually displayed. Now, our next job is to go ahead and somehow find out a way to add a state to this particular functional component here. So the way in which we do that in React, in case of functional component, we use something which is called as a use state hook. So we are going to jump into the details about what are hooks and what are the different types of hooks and why they are used but right now you need to understand that you need to use the use state hook from react in order to use a state so let's go ahead and learn how to do that so first of all you'd need to import the use state hook so to import that you would say import in curly brackets use state and then you need to import it from 
react. And once that thing is imported, the next thing which we are going to do is that we are going to make use of the use state hook in order to create a state. Now, in case of class based components, the way in which you create a state is that you create a class, you create a constructor inside that class, and then simply set the state using this dot state. So this was pretty straightforward. But in functional components, it's even simpler. So what you do is that uh, let's say you want to create a state variable called as a, let's say counter. So in order to create that variable, what you simply have to do is that you have to go ahead and create a variable. So you say const and here you have to actually create an array actually. And inside that array, you have to create a variable uh, which you want to create a state. So for example, I want to save the counter variable in my state. So I would say counter. Now, once you have this counter variable value stored inside the array, there's one thing which you need to notice that this counter variable cannot be changed directly. So for example, you cannot go ahead and say uh, counter equals some value here. Instead, what you need to do is that you need to dedicate a separate method or a separate function which actually is responsible for setting the value or changing the value of this particular counter variable. So you need to pass the name of that particular function here itself. So you need to give a comma and then you need to type in a function called as uh, set counter. You could actually name this thing as anything, but I have actually named it as set counter because that is responsible for setting the value of the counter. So it's as simple as that. So once you do that, you now need to say this equals use state, which is nothing but a hook which we have imported up over here. Now what this use state does is that it will actually create a state for the variable counter. And then it will also create a function, which is this function right here, which is responsible for changing the value of counter. And then to this use state, you actually can pass in the by default value, which you want to initialize for this counter variable. So for example, if you want to change the value of this counter variable to zero or initialize this counter variable with zero, you could simply pass in zero up over here. Or else if you wanted to make this thing as a string variable, you could simply go ahead and initialize it to an empty string. But for now, as we are just passing in zero as a value or the initial value to the counter, simply do that up over here. Okay, so now once this thing is done, let's now go ahead and let's now write the rest of the code. So once we have this particular state, uh, let's try to display that state up over here. So right up over here inside this div, I'll create another div and I would say counter value and just display the counter value by saying counter. So if I save this, if I go back to the code, as you can see, it says that the counter value is zero. So now let's create a button here so as to increment the value of the counter. So let's create another div here and let's add a button in this div. So button, and then I would name this button as increment. Go back here. We have the increment button. Let's add the on click attribute here. So on click equals and on clicking this particular button, we want to execute a function called as let's say increment. So I'll pass an increment up over here. Now let's create this increment function. So in this increment function, what we wish to do is that we wish to take the current value of counter and increment that value by one. So I'll make use of arrow functions here. So I would say const increment. This is going to be equal to. And now here in this increment function, we have to increment the counter value by one. So you might think that you simply have to do something like counter equals counter plus one and that should do the trick but this does not actually work if you go over here and if you click on that increment button you are going to have an error which is going to say that assignments to constant variable so this is not the way to do that as i earlier mentioned whenever you have to set the value of this variable you need to make use of this function which is right up over here so now instead of doing that, what you do is that you make use of this particular function here and you say set counter. And then to this, you simply need to pass in the value which you want to set. 
So you want to get the value of the counter first. So you would say counter and then simply add one to it. So what the set counter does is that it actually sets the value of the counter here for us. So this is actually similar to the set state method which we have used up over here. So in set state, you set the current state and in a similar fashion, we use set counter over here to set the value of this counter state. So once this thing is done, let's head back to the output. And if I click on increment now, as you can see the value of this counter increased. So if I keep on clicking, the value over here is going to increase. Now, just as an exercise, what you could do is that you could create another button down here called as decrement and try to decrement the value of the counter by one every time that decrement button is clicked. So hopefully you will be able to do that. So that's it for this lecture. And I hope that it was clear how to use state in a functional component. So first of all, you create a functional component. And in order to use state in a functional component, you need to make use of the use state hook. So simply import that use state hook. Then the way in which you use that is that you create a state variable like something like counter here. And then in order to manipulate that particular variable, you again go ahead and create a function which is set counter in this case. And then whenever you want to make the change, just like the set state method which we have here, you make use of the set counter in order to change the value of the counter variable. So now let's say if you want to create another variable inside the state, you simply go ahead, uh, create a const array here, name the variable. So that's going to be var name, then the function name, and then you say this equals to use state and set the initial value for var name. So if you want the var name to be variable of the type name, you could simply pass in the name value here for initialization. So now you have another variable in the state and whenever you want to manipulate that particular variable within your code, you simply go ahead and make use of this particular function just as we have used the set counter here. So this is how you actually could go ahead and make use of use state in order to use a state in a functional component. So we are going to make use of this a lot in the upcoming lectures. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.